through the stress that they went through. Especially when I think of what I was doing as a young adult. I was in college. What, what stresses did I have? The worst I had was finals week. And oh, that was kind of stressful, I guess, finals week. Um, you know, all of the whole semester hinges right then on there for one week on how well you do on all those tests. So it's a little bit of a stress for a young adult, I guess. Um, and then the next semester is going to depend on how well you did this semester as well. So that's what I had as a young adult for a stress. Nothing like Mary and Joseph. But I had a trick even when I was in, in college for getting through that finals week, I would look to Sunday. And that was my trick. Because on Sunday, finals week would be over. So I would focus on Sunday. I would do all the work I needed to do to get through to Sunday. Because I knew on Sunday that stress would be behind me. It would all be taken care of. I will have done all the work that I could to the best of my ability. Now on Sunday, I can rest. On Sunday, I can go home. I can eat healthy food. On Sunday, I can have a party if I want or not. I can do whatever I want on Sunday. But in the meantime, finals week is stressful. And I think about these young adults going through something nobody else in all of the world has ever gone through. And could Joseph look forward and see the day after? Could he see the future and see that promise that God had for him of what God had in store after they went through this whole stress of having a baby? Joseph was just this regular guy. I mean, he was a carpenter. That was his plan, to be a carpenter, to get married, to have a family. But now he's challenged in that plan, and his fiancée is pregnant, not with his son, but with the son of God. And it's true, people probably did talk, could have talked, been talking about them. And he still has to take care of Mary, his wife, this baby. Not only that, but now the government is saying they need to travel with his pregnant wife to Bethlehem to register for the census. That's a lot to put on the shoulders for a young adult man. Joseph was an ordinary young adult, asked to do an extraordinary thing that would have an impact on all of us sitting here today. Could he see ahead past this stressful, challenging time? I wonder. I do see, though, that in his time of challenge, in this time of his big responsibilities, God gave Joseph some gifts that God gives to us in our challenges, in our responsibilities that are, that are big time happening in our lives. God gave Joseph faith, number one. Faith is believing in something that you can't see. And for Joseph, in Matthew ch chapter 1, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son and David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. And when Joseph woke from the dream, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He had faith in that angel. You know, for Mary, an angel appeared to her. For Joseph, the angel came in a dream. But even in this dream, not, you know, like, like Mary had it just come to her, but for him it's a dream. But he believed it. He trusted it. And when you have faith in something, enough that you trust in something, you believe in something, even the things you cannot see, oftentimes your actions will be a witness to your faith. And for Joseph, his actions were a witness to his faith. You know, his faith encouraged him to not be afraid, to do exactly like the angel said. And so even if Joseph was afraid, he did it. He followed through. He took Mary as his wife. He followed through with his commitment to God, to Mary, and to baby Jesus. His actions were a witness to that faith that he had, his belief in something he could not see. But God also gave Joseph something that, unfortunately or fortunately, God gives to us sometimes in our times of struggle and stress and challenge. And it's Humility. Humility is not something that we want to be humbled in our times of stress and challenges. Joseph had to give something up at this time. He had, a, had a, probably a plan and a dream as a young man to get married and have a job and raise a family. But now that dream has changed. He has to give something up. And Matthew chapter 1 says Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. 
It's God's child that he will raise. And her husband Joseph, it goes on, (laughs) this is what it says Joseph is going to do. Being a just man and unwilling to put Mary to shame, Joseph resolved to divorce her quietly. That was his plan. He didn't want to embarrass Mary with this whole situation of her being pregnant before they are, you know, together and married. So he has a plan to not embarrass her. And here's where I think there's a difference between being humbled and being humiliated. I think Joseph was humbled. But being the man of God that he was, he wasn't humiliated. And there's a difference. I think if Joseph was humiliated, then he wouldn't have had this idea that the Bible says to divorce her quietly and to not put her to shame. If he was humiliated, if it was me... I would want to humiliate the other person, right? Let them be publicly shamed and humiliated. Take it all off of me and put it on the other person. But that is not Joseph's way. Joseph instead is humbled and he humbles himself and he has a plan to take care of her even before he hears the good news from the angel. That is the man of God that he is. Joseph had to give something up of himself and he is humbled And so when he follows what the angel says to him, um, he takes her as his wife. He's going to raise this child as his own. His firstborn child now is not even, uh, is not that flesh and blood that you kind of make plans for sometimes, you know? But he's going to raise Jesus and call him his own and love him as his own and be his father. Joseph is committed all in to Mary and Jesus for some men or women, this could be humiliating. But for Joseph, it was humbling. And there's a difference in our time of stress. Are we humbled or humiliated? But something else that God gave to Joseph um, in his time of challenge and stress and wondering was patience. And that's the thing that none of us like to have, especially it to be forced on us, to have to wait But Joseph had to wait and have patience on a a few things, actually. In Matthew chapter 1, it says that he took took her as his wife, but he didn't know her until later after she gave birth to his son. So he had to be patient as a husband, which is probably tricky sometimes, too. But he was patient. But even then, he had a bigger patience. I was reading through um, the Bible between Joseph and Jesus... And we hear of Joseph taking Mary as his wife and going to Bethlehem and Jesus is born. Then we have a story when Jesus is a little older. Jesus is about 12 years old and Mary and Joseph and Jesus travel to the temple and then when they go back, they they lose Jesus for a little while. (laughs) Happens to all of us. Apparently happened to Mary and Joseph. Um, And so they go back to the temple and they find Jesus there praying and learning and um, it's a great story. But after that in the Bible, we don't hear any more about Joseph. And then when Jesus is dying on the cross, Jesus says something to Mary and to one of his friends, one of his disciples. He says to the disciple and to Mary that they should take care of each other and be family to one another. Which means Joseph wasn't around anymore to take care of Mary. And I think about that. What patience did Joseph have to raise Jesus? And now, did he even get to see Jesus as an adult? It doesn't say in scripture. He probably wasn't there to see Jesus' ministry, to see his teaching, to see him being called a rabbi. Joseph wasn't there when Jesus was crucified. Joseph wasn't there to see the miraculous resurrection for himself, to see God's plan unfold. What patience he had to have had to raise this child as his own. What faith to believe in something that he might not even see in his own earthly life himself. Can you imagine this patience? Waiting for something, for that promise that God had. Which brings me to a fourth gift that God gave Joseph and God gives you and that is the promise. The promise that we read right at the very beginning of the birth of Jesus that Jesus was born to die for the sins of the world. 
Matthew chapter 1 said, She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. So God had made this promise way back when. And now God is making good on this promise. God is making good on this promise. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And God was with Joseph and Mary, and God is with you through Jesus Christ. It was a promise. God gave this promise to an ordinary man named Joseph. And God gives a promise to you. In whatever time of your life happens to be joys, sorrows, happiness, stresses, challenges, that you are not alone as well. That Jesus Christ has forgiven your sins and is giving you a new life, a purpose, a plan, a future that you can have faith and see to look forward to. And I wonder, did Joseph look forward then? Was that a part of why he could keep on going with Mary and have so much faith in marrying her and raising this child and going to Bethlehem and taking good care of Jesus and making sure Jesus visits the temple and all these things, teaching Jesus to be a carpenter? Could he see ahead? Could he have faith in the things he could not see but was promised to him? I heard a counselor once say, that um, it makes all the world a difference in a person's life, whoever we are, when we have a goal, when we have a future, when we have faith in something. So that if you're going through something that's stressful, that's a challenge in life, something that was totally unexpected, you never saw coming, and it's, it's really, you know, one of the biggest trials in your life. But if you can see a goal, and you can see a future, and a hope, and a plan, that it makes all the world a difference in how a person responds to dealing with those challenges and dealing with those hardships. And then the counselor said, and on the other hand, for people who can't see that future, who don't have a hope, who can't see to Sunday, who can't see to the day after the stresses and after the trials, then it's so hard on them to not have that future. And they can fall into depression, they can fall into addiction, they can fall into pain. So, at Lutheran Church of the Master, we're doing something kind of new this year for Christmas. We're going to have a different kind of a worship service. On the Wednesday before Christmas, in the chapel, at 7 o'clock, and we're going to call it a Blue Christmas. And it's different. Because like John was saying, you know, oftentimes at Christmas we have all these trappings of cookies and Christmas trees and pretty songs on the radio and stuff. But that's not always where we feel that we're at. If we're honest with God and ourselves, for some of us at Christmas time, Christmas is hard. Because maybe you've gone through the loss of a job. Maybe you've gone through the death of a loved one. Maybe your home life is not so happy right now and you're struggling with broken relationships or something. And, uh, and to be honest, that's really, really hard at Christmas time. So on December 21st at 7 p.m. in the chapel, we're going to have a blue Christmas worship service. And I love Joy to the World, but we're not going to sing it that night. We're going to sing Silent Night. And I think we'll probably hold candles with one another. And I love singing praises to the Lord, but also in the Bible are prayers called laments. Laments are prayers of sorrow and heartache and kind of crying out to the Lord. So if that's where you're at this Christmas time and you just need to cry out to the Lord for a little while to remember your loved ones, to uh, tell the Lord what you're going through, this might be your service because we're also going to point to that future. You know, we, if not with joy, at least with faith, we're going to hear the good news of Jesus again and point to the future, to the plan, to the hope, that promise that Jesus Christ came to die for your sins, to give you a new life, to give you eternal life, to give your life today even, a purpose and a plan. So, if you learn anything from Joseph this Christmas, it's that ordinary people can have extraordinary impact on other people. Um, so, just as an aside, also, if, if 
this sermon or that Christmas service on the 21st doesn't speak to you because you're like, no, I'm doing pretty good this Christmas. I got a lot of joy. That's great. <laughs> it's okay. You should never feel guilty. You should have lots of joy. But here's our challenge then for us is to uh, recognize that that might not be our neighbor's. It might not be where they are in. So our challenge is to, you know, the Grinch down the street who doesn't like all the Christmas lights, be kind to him, be patient. Or the person at the store who is less than nice to you, say an extra quiet prayer for that person. You don't know the challenges or the struggles that's going through that person's life. So for us, we, we pray for one another. We uh, are kind and patient and we show the love of Christ to one another. Ordinary people can have extraordinary impact on other people. And also, it's to ordinary people like Joseph, this young man, who he probably never saw this coming, that he would be called to raise the Son of God. And to you, that God gives a promise. You, whoever you are, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And he sent Jesus, not just to have a relationship with Joseph and Mary, but Jesus to have a relationship with you every minute of your life, through the good times, through the bad times. God has sent Jesus Christ into your life to give you forgiveness of sins, to change your life today, to give you hope for that life to come.